When it comes to our local development environment, we have so many different choices. So for example, you might use something like MAMP or WAMP. And you know what? That's really fine for small projects. However, as you might have experienced, these all-encompassing tools quickly break down as soon as you require some kind of extension that isn't natively supported. So for example, maybe you want to use the Encrypt extension, but maybe WAMP doesn't support that. Or maybe you want to get a Beanstalk server set up so that you can leverage queues. Well, once again, MAMP or WAMP can make this difficult because they sort of have a way of tucking away all that complexity. So you might find that those tools begin to break down. But what if we could instead retain this simplicity while still being afforded all the flexibility in the world to install whatever it is we need? Well, the Laravel brand can help us with this. And of course, what I'm referring to is Laravel Homestead. Now, think of Homestead as a dedicated Vagrant box. Now, if Vagrant scares you and the idea of virtual machines, don't worry. It's really not that complicated, but even better, with the Laravel brand, we can both hold your hand and make it as simple as possible. So let me show you. Now, in order to leverage Homestead, we first need two dependencies, and those are Vagrant for managing our development environments, as well as a VM provider like VirtualBox. Now don't worry, these are not complicated to get set up. There's not huge amounts of configuration. So truthfully, it's a process of clicking a button and running through the installer. So do that for both Vagrant as well as VirtualBox. Now, once you have both of these tools installed, you should be able to run Vagrant from your terminal. And here's the output. Perfect, we are all set to go. All right, so now we want to pull in the Laravel Homestead box. We can do that by running Vagrant box add Laravel slash Homestead. Very simple, and you only have to do this once. Next, we need to clone the Homestead repository. And again, you only have to do this one time total. Now, what this will provide is, of course, your Vagrant file, your aliases, your Homestead configuration file, where we can set up our keys and our mappings and our sites, all of that stuff I will show you how to use. Anyhow, let's just clone it, and you do want to clone it to sort of a central location. So I have a code directory here. I'm just going to run git clone and paste that in, and again, we'll call it homestead. Now, if I cd into that directory and list the files, we're all set to go. So our first stop will be to edit the homestead.yaml file. Now, there's a pretty good chance that this path will mostly be the same. We just want to replace this with our home directory name. However, if you have no idea what I'm referring to here, it sounds like you need to generate the key. You can do this by running this single command, and don't feel like you have to memorize it. Just replace this string with your email address, and you should be good to go. Now, you should be able to reference your public key. Now remember, once again, these are things that you only have to do once, so don't think you have to do this with every project. The way that Homestead is set up, we can run multiple applications on this one VM, and that can be useful in a lot of cases. So if I go back to my code directory, imagine that we have some new Laravel project. Laravel new example. Okay, so now I want to share this new project with my VM. If we go back into our homestead directory, and once again edit the homestead.yaml file, you'll see that we can map any number of directories to a folder on our VM. So for example, why don't we map users Jeffrey Way code, and I called it example, and that will be mapped to slash home slash vagrant slash code slash example. Next, let's set up a domain here. We will call this example.app. And once again, what should this point to? Well, it should point to code example. And of course, we want the public directory to be the document root. And that's it. We're basically done here. So if you ever add a new site, just remember to return to this file, add a new mapping, add a new site. And of course, we can't forget to update our host file. To do that, we want to edit the etsy slash host file. So here at the bottom, we will just point the default localhost to example.app. And that's it. You don't have to restart anything. We're all done. OK, so now we've completed all of those initial one-step processes. At this point, we've added a new folder and added a new site. So we need to run Vagrant up to build our environment. And that's it. So you'll find that the provisioning process is actually really, really quick with Homestead. That means if I switch over to Chrome, we can browse to our site, which I called example.app, 
and you want to make sure that's on port 8000. But now, what if we want to interact with the VM and poke around, so to speak? Well, we can simply run from the homestead directory, mind you. We're not in that example project that we generated. So this is separate from our application. Anyhow, we can run vagrant ssh. Give that just a second, and we're in. So notice if I run php-v, we are using the cutting edge version of PHP, and actually a number of things are available. So for example, we have Nginx, we have MySQL, we have a number of asset management tools and build tools like Grunt and Gulp and Bower, things like that. You'll have access to Beanstalk for your queues. We have a lesson on that at Laracast, by the way. We have Memcache for all of your caching needs. Of course, Laravel Envoy is going to be included with that, in addition to a number of other things. But don't forget, you now have a dedicated Ubuntu VM. So if you need to pull in anything else, just run sudo apt get install, and you're good to go. So now let's take a look at our home directory, and we want to go into Vagrant. So this is where, right now, all of our projects will be stored. So if I go into code, there's our example app, and notice that it's being synced with our guest machine. So if I make a change to any of these files, it'll immediately be synced or shared with my VM. That's how that works. And of course, the same is going to work in reverse. So now let's exit out with Control D. And we do have one little problem. Most of the time, we really won't be in the homestead directory. You'll be in your main project here, right? But now, SSHing into our Vagrant machine can be a little bit of a pain because we'd have to, using this command, go back to the homestead directory. So what I would recommend doing is creating a little alias here. And you can place this within your bash profile or actually a number of locations, but that should be fine. So maybe we could call this VM and we can manually SSH into our VM. So we want to SSH into Vagrant, that's the username, at, and then the standard 127.0.0.1. Finally, don't forget to set a port, and that'll be 2222. Okay, and that's it. So now we can simply run VM to SSH in. And there we go. Home, Vagrant, code, example, list the files, and we're in. So now let's talk about databases and how we can access our VM database from our guest machine. So right now, if you try to log into MySQL, we will get access denied. By default, we want to use a username of Homestead and a password of Secret. Okay, and we're in. So now if I run Show Databases, note that we already have a Homestead database here. That's just provided out of the box. And actually, with a 4.2 installation, your local database configuration will automatically be set up to use that. So that's one less step that you'll have to go through every time you start a new app. So let's, just for the purposes of demonstration, create a table users that will have a name that is a var car of 50. We don't really care about this at all. I just want to show you how we can connect to it using something like SQL Pro or Navicat or whatever it is you're using. All right, so now we have this database homestead that has one table here. Let's try to connect to it now. Okay, so I've switched over to SQL Pro, which is my preferred tool for interacting with my databases, but you can use whatever you want. Let's go ahead and create a new favorite, and we're gonna call it homestead. And we want to set the port once again to 127.0.0.1. The username, like we discussed, is homestead, and the password is secret. Finally, our default database will be homestead. Lastly, you want to set the port to 33060. And one quick note on this. Remember that these settings here in this port, this is for connecting outside of the VM. Within your VM, where Laravel is actually running, the default ports will, of course, be appropriate. So let's save that and connect. We're in. There's our users table. All right, so that's mostly it for this lesson. But if you want a quick recap, a quick refresher, Let's imagine that we now have a new site that we want to hook in to our VM, so to speak. Well, I will return to my code directory, and why don't we say Laravel new awesome project, and give that just a second to install. Okay, real quick, why don't we cd into app routes and update the route here. Return everything is awesome. Okay, so now we have our awesome new project. Next, we want to go into our homestead directory and update it using your editor of choice, edit homestead.yaml. So now let's add a new folder mapping. Let's map users, Jeffrey Way, code, 
awesome project, and we will map that to home vagrant code awesome project. That's where it will live on our VM. Now let's set up a new site here. Let's map, and why don't we call it awesome.app to home vagrant code awesome project. And once again, the public directory should always be the document root for a Laravel app. And basically that's it. So now we've made these changes, but how do we get them to be reflected on our VM? Well, you have a couple choices. Now, the most painless way to have these changes be reflected is to run vagrant destroy and vagrant up. So we will destroy our virtual machine and recreate it from scratch. Now, this is fine, but it's possible that you don't want to do this. There might be installations that you have on your VM that aren't reflected in your provisioning script. So if that's the case, there is a serve shell script that Homestead provides where you may simply SSH into your VM and run serve, give the name of your site, awesome.app, and then provide a path to the document root. And that's an easy way to handle this. If you do want to do that, just refer to the Laravel docs in the Homestead section, and it'll show you exactly how to do it. And that's it. Now remember, anytime you add a new site, you must always update your Etsy host file. So in this case, we could duplicate that and change this to awesome.app, and you're done. If we now switch to the browser, go to awesome.app on port 8000, there's your new Laravel app. So we have awesome app and example app. Two or any number of sites running on the same VM using Laravel Homestead.